Good, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, uh, chairman, members of the board, and fellow shareholders. Fortunately, once again, um, I feel compelled to raise a number of issues at CRH's AGM this year, 2014. However, before I start, I would like to congratulate Mr. Manifold on his promotion to CEO, and I do wish him every success in the future. Hopefully, by all working together, we can all iron out the difficulties that CRH has had over many decades. CRH is a good company, but it's got a very, very um, black side, a past which has not gone away and which is still going on. But my question and, and the reason for my address is because I am not satisfied, I'm not at all satisfied with the performance of non-executive directors. Non-executive directors are quite simply not engaging with shareholders or not engaging with the public. Basically what I'm saying is CRH has not in place the requisite system of checks and balances between executives and non-executive directors. I'll just give a little explanation on that. I, I believe that the very future of CRH is in jeopardy. There's a huge amount of rationalization going on in the industry, as we all know. Hudson Navarre is to name but one. And CRH has apparently gone down the road in the good times of an inane acquisition policy. We are now seeing the results in spades. 45 rogue acquisitions, an impairment charge of 755 million, and counting. But like what has been going on? Where are the non-executives? Not one non-executive set down a challenge to a misguided and uninformed splurge of acquisitions. There are questions for Mr. Lee, but they probably won't be answered now. Similarly, Finance Director Maeve Carton also has questions to answer, having served 25 or 26 years in, the, in a financial role and it has now for many years been Finance Director. And apparently there's another 45 acquisitions under review. It may very well be that uh, one of the larger companies seeks to take CRH out. And it also may very well be a good idea for CRH to consider the selling off of the US division, which is, has been performing quite well and would make a huge return for, uh, for shareholders. It's something that I'd, I would like you to consider going forward. Now, corporate governance. Where has the corporate governance been? Like, well, why, why have all these companies been bought and now suddenly Miles Lee told us nothing last year that there, was a, that there was all these rogue acquisitions, 45 or 90 or whatever it comes to. You know, the funny thing is, we're all brought here today uh, to sign off on what's called a PSP, a performance share plan. And I find it simply staggering that as the board surreptitiously announces its odious incompetence in relation to these takeovers, it calls together shareholders seeking to vote in a bonus structure of up to 350% of salary for executives. One wonders, are we at the central remedial clinic or the rehab? Here, here. With non-executives asleep at the wheel, this grievous dark side that I spoke to earlier about, CRH, continues to flourish. There are criminal price-fixing cartels. There is criminal market sharing. There is market manipulation, and the corporate convictions con evictions continue. There have been some horrendous evictions. For example, CNH quarries in Galway, Matt Callaghan in Trim, Stoneford quarries in Jalik, and more recently, uh, Hudson Brothers has been struggling to survive in the marketplace and claims that it too is the subject of an eviction policy by CRH. By letter last September, I sought to bring certain of these matters to the attention of CRH non-executive director, Ms. Heather Ann McSharry. It rallied, I asked Ms. McSharry as follows. I, the CRH executive directors were not being upfront with her, or with, with you, Heather Ann, with you in terms of disclosure. And I pointed out to you that it is your duty and the duty of all non-executive directors to be fully informed. <coughs> You merely brushed my letter aside and you continue to kick the can down the road. Perhaps in, in, in the hope that this whole scenario will just go away. <coughs> you also claimed that I had been, failed to substantiate any of my allegations. Of course, this is completely untrue. My allegations in, re in regard to destroying evidence in Poland were proved true and CRH had a fine of 530,000. My claim that CRH would be, would be fined in Poland 
for operating a price-fixing cement cartel. That was proved true. CRH were fined 26 million. Many other of my allegations were upheld by the European Court of Justice back in the late 90s. Uh, for example, interference with banks, uh, actions by associations, boycotting of uh, competitors. There's a whole array of them. But I bet none of the non-executive directors have ever read the, the European Commission's uh, decision of 1994 and the subsequent court decisions, the European Court of First Instance and the European Court of Justice. Now the funny thing is, and you've got to face up to this, uh, and I'm speaking to the non-executives, in relation to the last cartel fine, well, it's not the last cartel fine that CRH were involved in, but the European cartel fine, on its own admission, CRH was the initiator of the European cement cartel, a note which was confiscated from CRH during a dawn raid by the European Commission, stated, as Ireland was the country that started these discussions, i.e. the cement cartel, Ireland had a duty to request that they be continued, as they had been extremely useful in calming the situation in Ireland. I mean, that's, I didn't make that up. That's a fact. You've got to come and you've got to face the music. Now, we all know, I would say everybody in this room knows about the Mahan Tribunal and about its findings. There's no need for me to go and explain the findings of corruption and in inappropriate relationships between business and uh, politicians that Mahan found. We have a number of people in the room and a number of people, unfortunately, who can't make it today, have been seeking redress in various formats from CRH. And it's just impossible in the Irish system. But for example, the Competition Authority has refused since its inception in 1991 to undertake any form of investigation into your company. You non-executive directors are hiding behind this. In fact, on April 13, 2011, two Gardaí from the Competition Authority told Mr. Peter and Mr. Tom Good that there isn't a hope of the Competition Authority investigating this behaviour, that's the cement and concrete cartel, because of who you're up against and what's at stake. Now I ask you, is that any way for our country to go forward? I thought, and we all thought when we got a new government, that we were going to have a new culture, a new politics. But the non-execs are still hiding. There's fear, I'm going to finish now, I'm on my last one. There's, there is very clear evidence that Patricia Kenny and Ministers Bruton, Shatter and Perry are, pr are protecting an epidemic of white collar criminality. CRH cannot indefinitely rely on phony Irish regulators, political protection and media capture for continuing immunity. It must, sooner or later, bite the bullet and commence a programme of redress. And just a footnote, Matt Callaghan Limited. I visited Matt Callaghan Limited, the, Pat Callaghan in fact, I visited his house on many occasions. He's a very, very ill man and in, in desperate need of care and attention and some finance. I know that he, that he was evicted by CRH. He has claimed that himself. CRH have on two occasions paid the poor man a settlement or compensation. In, 1990, in 2002, CRH paid Callaghan's 40,000. Imagine for evicting him from his business. And in 2005, CRH paid another 100,000. Well, I'm calling on CRH now to make a decent payment to the Callaghan family so that they can care for their sick uh, Pat, the owner of Matt Callaghan Limited and who you evicted out of business. Now, I'm calling on you non-execs and I will be back to you and back to you because you must step up to the plate and you must answer for this dark side of CRH. Thank you very much.